This is the Ferrari California T. Now, some purists claim it's the least Ferrari-like Ferrari, but it's not. I'll give you an example of a very un-Ferrari Ferrari. This mobile phone holder here, which has a perfume scent in it, so you can spray yourself while making calls. Yeah, it stinks. Mind you, this will only cost you £30. This car starts from £155,000. But this one, with all the options and everything on it, is actually 215 grand. Now, part of the reason for that is that it's the handling speciale, so that adds five and a half grand to the price tag, and that includes a matte grille, you get a matte rear diffuser and some matte exhaust. But that handling pack is just the tip of a very, very large optional extra iceberg, which when it <laughs> starts on the price of these things, you're going to be left feeling a little bit cold. So if you want the Shield Scuderia Ferrari badges on the wings, they are going to set you back £1,056. If you would like the two-tone exterior paint, it's 4320 quid. If you want to go for the, well, the front and rear parking cameras, a snip at £4,032. I mean, <clears throat> things are just so expensive in this car. If you want this lovely diamond quilting leather on the seats, well, that is going to set you back. Oh my gosh, that's quite expensive. It's £2,112. To be fair though, if I look at the stitching, it is very accurate. And I would imagine that the man at Ferrari who signs off these cars has, well, he has OCD because <laughs> the lines are perfectly parallel and the stitching is lovely. And I think if you compare the quality of this interior to let's say that of an Aston Martin V12 Vantage Roadster, it's a bit like comparing a Burberry handbag to a Bottega Venetia one. Let's just say, that the Italian handbag is of the higher quality. Now, yeah, it is a very nice car to sit in. And well, this one has lots of carbon fiber. So this carbon fiber, well, I think it's called the driver cockpit, it's about 4,000 pounds. And when you add up all the carbon fiber in this car, it comes to 11,400 pounds. You even have to pay 1,400 pounds if you want carbon fiber on the cover for the cup holder. So you're not going to want to use that cup holder because you want to see where your £1,400 goes. So you're going to want to put your bottle there in the side door bin, but oh no, it won't fit. So you can just shove it in the glove box. Now, moving on to the infotainment system. In old Ferraris, they were terrible. But this one is actually pretty good. You know, it's, it's quite slick. It's easy to navigate through the different menus using these shortcut keys. It's dead easy to input a destination on the sat-nav and input a waypoint as well along your route if you want to. And... I find it simple to pair a mobile phone and stream music via Bluetooth. If you want, you can upgrade it to have Apple CarPlay. Now that will cost you an extra £2,400. I mean, why? Why is it that much? And you can't actually get Android Auto. I mean, come on, Ferrari. Do you think that someone like Larry Page can't afford to buy one of your cars? Could afford to buy the whole blooming company if he wanted it. And that brings us on to practicality. You might think it's a bit odd to talk about that when we're talking about Ferraris, but this is the Ferrari you're supposed to be able to live with every day. So I'm going to put the roof up on this car because it is a car of two halves. So you can have it as a convertible or as a coupe. And it only takes 14 seconds to put this roof up. As you'll see, it's a two piece roof. It all moves very smoothly into place, nice and quick. So you don't have to wait too long because after all time is money. And you probably don't have much time if you can afford a Ferrari. I'll just put this window down so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to hop into the back of the car because, yes, it does have some occasional rear seats. So if you absolutely have to, you could give someone a lift in the back of this Ferrari. This seat moves well forward automatically under its own steam. It is quite slow. It's the slowest thing on this car, actually. I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to try and get this one out of the way. Ow, ow, it's crushed my legs. Right. Oh, ah! Ah! <laughs> I think I just... I pulled a muscle in my groin. Be careful of that. So yeah, you, you could kind of give someone a lift, but you might end up damaging them somewhat. <laughs> Look, there's no room at all. Um, yeah, but it is it is just about possible if you need to give someone a lift back from the airport, I don't know. And yeah, you can actually fit a child seat in the back. You've got Isofix fittings there. So anyway, I'm gonna get out of the back. Oh God, that wasn't nice at all. I really do think I have pulled a muscle in my groin. Injured by a Ferrari. Now I thought I'd get I have. I thought I'd be injured by a Ferrari by maybe crashing it. <laughs> Not getting into the back of it. Now one of the things about the California is that it does have a decent sized boot. So I'll just put this out of the way. And you can see it is quite large. Some of it is taken up by the wind deflector. You can always get rid of that if you aren't planning on taking the roof down. 
and yeah, you can fit a, a big suitcase in there. The only thing is though, look, if you are going to take the roof down, you have to have this in place, so there's far less that you can actually carry, but still, for a car that can do almost 200 miles an hour, it's not too impractical, really. Speaking of which, the heart of every Ferrari is its engine. And in the case of the California T, it's a 3.9 litre twin turbo V8 with 560 horsepower. And I think the best way to start driving this car is to launch it. And it's dead easy. I just turn this switch to sport, press launch, and then floor the throttle and release the brake. And we launch, and oh my gosh! Whoa! Whoa, 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 it's super fast! And I can't see anything. Let's have the windscreen wipers on. Oh, right. <laughs> So yeah, it probably wasn't gonna do the 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds like it's supposed to, because it's super slippery and this car's actually running on winter tires. But my God, <laughs> well, I think you saw that, it's blooming quick. <laughs> now this engine, for a turbocharged unit, it just loves to rev and it red lines at 7,500 RPM. It's actually won Engine of the Year award. It's that good. And one thing about it though is the noise. So it does sound pretty tasty, but yeah, it is tasty and it is more powerful than the one in the old California, the natural aspirated car, but it doesn't sound quite as good. Now I'm really sorry to say that. I'm gonna let you hear it with the roof down. Let's just take the roof down. So yeah, it's not quite as good and that does matter. You see, Kill Bill had a better storyline than Reservoir Dogs, but Reservoir Dogs was the better movie because it had the better soundtrack. And for me, that kind of rings true with the Ferrari California T. It's definitely better than the old California. The engine is way more powerful. And it sounds awesome, but it's just not as awesome as the old car's naturally aspirated engine. Like I said at the beginning, this car is the handling speciale, so it's got some stiffer suspension, and as a result, it handles better than the normal California, and it is generally sporty, and yeah, great fun to drive. Now, some people will complain, go, oh yeah, but the California, it doesn't drive like a proper Ferrari should, and yeah, it, it won't out-handle a 488, of course it won't. But that's a bit like complaining that a 2013 Petrus isn't as good as a 2014. It's not but it's still pretty blooming tasty. The handling speciale also gets faster shifts from its seven speed gearbox, and my God, it does change gears lightning quick. I have noticed though that very, very occasionally when you're bootling around down and you've got it in automatic mode and you suddenly floor the throttle and you're in comfort mode, the car kind of can be found wanting. It's like, oh, wait, you want me to move? Oh, okay, and it's a bit hesitant, but it only happens very seldomly. In terms of the rest of the package, well, the California is the car that you really can live with every day. It's very, very comfy, despite this one having the upgraded suspension. It does that thing where it rounds off the very edges of the bumps. And while it's firm, it's still very comfortable, a bit like a temper a memory foam mattress. And that brings you onto the seats. You see, in Ferrari's Evolved, you can tell that they've been designed for petite Italians. They're very small and snug. Whereas the one in this car, look, I've got loads of room to move around. And in fact, the bases feel quite firm. A little bit too firm for my bony bum. It needs a bit more cushioning, actually. It's, it's clearly been made for a fat cat American's bottom. <laughs> now, the Americans of you who are watching might think I'm being a bit insulting to your nation, but yeah, the Brits are just as fat. It's just that we, on the whole, don't have quite so much money to afford a car like this. And as you can see, yeah, we don't quite have the kind of weather you might find in the place where this car is named after, California. And that brings us on to the California T's downsides. Here's five. The display for the heated seats is there, so the passenger can't see what temperature they've set theirs to. I really like the look of this car, but the back end is just a bit swollen. It, it kind of reminds me of a female chimpanzee's bottom when she's on heat. The cabin's air of sophistication is let down ever so slightly, by a boy racer style turbo gauge. When you put the car into reverse, it makes this annoying beep. Like some truck reversing. And the exposed rear view camera often gets covered in dirt, so you can't see anything. 
The vanity mirror is so cheap and flimsy it distorts like a hall of mirrors and makes it look like a bit of a goon. Thankfully, the California has plenty of cool features which more than make up for all this. You can always rely on Ferrari to make sure its engines look as good as they go. Just like in a Formula One car, lots of the controls are operated through the steering wheel, including the driving modes via this Manatino switch. The button for the cruise control doesn't say cruise control. Instead, it says pit speed. Yeah. The steering wheel has shift lights built into it. The California is available with a seven year maintenance program and up to 12 years worth of warranty for peace of mind, if rather expensive, motoring. So then, what's my verdict on Ferrari California T handling speciale? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist it. It might not be the best Ferrari, but it's still a great GT car. Now, if you're thinking about buying a new car, click up there to go to carwow.co.uk to compare offers from dealers and buy at a price you're confident in. And on average, people save £3,600 on a new car through Carwow. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on our logo to subscribe to our channel. Also, click on the windows to watch some other videos from Carwow.